Eagle Harbor, three distinct businesses converge into one at Le Shop 2, where customers can auction off their home goods and redecorate in an upscale market with a plethora of, plate of pieces for all different design tastes. Joining us now on the Oakland County Megacast is Deborah Slobin, owner of Le Shop 2, and Trista Mulpey from the Le Shop 2 Auction House. Thank you both for being here. Thank you for having us. Thank you so much. Appreciate having you both on. So, Deborah, let's start with you. Can you talk about Le Shop 2 and what was the inspiration for opening this business? Yes, yes. So uh, a dear friend of mine, her name is Julie, she called me about 10 years ago and said, hey, Deborah, there's this really cool building in Wald Lake available. Do you want to rent it, open up a consignment store? And I thought, hmm, I have no money, no experience. <laughs> and so, um, 10 years ago, we got a small, small business loan and uh, we opened up our first store and uh, we we're specializing in kind of shabby chic furniture and clothing and accessories and whatever. And then we really started going towards um, the path of mid-century modern, iconic 20th century furniture. And um, so about eight years ago, we thought, you know what? That 3,000 square foot store, which is not big enough for us to do what we really wanted to do. And so there is a building in Kego Harbor. It was the old house in Denmark building. It was a very kind of iconic building. I used to love coming here as a child with my parents. It was available. So we went from 3,000 square feet to 17,000 square feet. And uh, and we're still adding on. We actually just about a month ago rented a uh, another warehouse for about 6,000 square feet. So, so we're having a lot of fun um, uh, doing what we do over here. And uh, what we do is we, we do, yeah, you mentioned, uh, Tyler, uh, three separate businesses. Mm -hmm. And so what those are is, of course, Le Shop, where we are right now. This is a 17,000 square foot showroom full of uh, iconic 20th century furniture and art and sculptures and lighting. And then the next leg of our business is our uh, estate sale business. And then, of course, we have our auction house, which Trish will talk about um, towards, uh, towards the middle. And um, yeah, so we do a lot of fun things here. They all kind of feed each other and work well and play nicely together. So it's a wonderful um, a symbiotic relationship. And so these products that you have there, Deborah, uh, you mentioned some of them are from estate sales. Some of them are from uh, people that will bring their items in. It's a consignment store, so they'll sell some of their items to, to the store. And then, of course, you will either restore them and sell them or sell them as is. Uh, to the customers out in the community that will come into your store. Uh, but outside of that, what are some other ways that you pick up these different products? Because there's a unique collection of different items that are in your shop in Kiko Harbor. Yes, thank you. So uh, basically, you know, we've kind of over the years developed a rep reputation for selling a lot of higher end collectible pieces. So people call us somebody all over the country uh, with really, really unique pieces. But I gotta tell you, Tyler, we are very, very fortunate. We're what we call in the hub of mid-century modern iconic pieces. Back in like the 50s and 60s, the, um, uh, the, the people around this area, you know, I say, you know, West Bloomfield, Bloomfield Hills, Birmingham, you know, those surrounding areas, they really supported uh, Cranbrook. And so they often, would you know help sponsor some of the um, artists and designers that came out of there and purchase their pieces? And so we go to people's homes today now, Tyler. You know they call us and say, "I've got a lot of pieces. Either I want an appraisal, or I want an estate sale, or I want consignment." And we go to their home, and we are just blown away by the treasures they have in their home they're not even aware of. You know, I always tell the story of a person. So, um, person will call us for an estate sale, right? and we'll go to your home and we'll start doing appraisal of the pieces you have, your art, mm -hmm. your furniture, you know, um, accessories. And we're at a, a, a client's house, uh, the father had passed away and we're dealing with the two daughters and we're in the father's uh, library. And we always tell people, don't throw anything away. Do not, what you may think is junk could be an incredible treasure. So to highlight that example, we're in the library and they're kind of cleaning out his desk and, and throwing papers away and whatever. And they go to his um, shelf and they see on there what they call the dust collector. It's like this little wire, nothing sculpture, they thought. And they go to take it and throw it in the garbage. And Terry, our art appraiser says, wait a minute, wait a minute. Can I see it up close? And goes, I think this might be very important. I'm gonna take a picture of it, send it to the foundation and find out what it is. Mm -hmm. Well, P.S. This dust collector 
turned to be a Harry Bertoya sculpture that we sold for them at auction for $65,000. So don't throw anything away. <laughs> yeah, you know, let, the, uh, let the experts tell you if it's, if it's worth keeping or not. We're exactly. Joined, we're joined by Deborah Sloman, the owner of Le Shop 2 in Kegel Harbor, and Tristan Maltby from their auction house as well. So Trista, tell, tell us some more about the auction house that, that you're a part of, how it functions, and, and when these auctions are held. Yeah, so our auction house we're absolutely excited about. We have been um, in the auction business for uh, just about six years, mm -hmm. I believe. Yes, uh, six right. years. I joined the team about a uh, year and a half ago, and uh, we do quarterly <laughs> <laughs> and we do quarterly auctions, and we uh, do them all online. So anybody around the world can essentially be a part of our auctions. We have right now for the upcoming auction on April third, uh, this Sunday. We have about 2,600 bidders uh, from all over the United States, uh, Europe, uh, Asia, and we have um, uh, just under 300 items. So each auction is curated, and that's what I assist with. I help curate the auction and gather the pieces with uh, my my other uh, the, one of the other co-owners, Terry Stern, who is the owner of Detroit Fine Art Appraisals. And uh, so we we once again we. Uh, gather these items and create a theme. So this theme is modern design meets street art. So talking about what Deborah was saying, the mid-century modern furniture, we have these iconic furniture pieces and uh, modern art pieces as well, which then uh, as you go through the catalog, go through the auction, it gets more contemporary, more street art, more urban art, graffiti art. Uh, so there's a little bit of, of something for everybody at this auction, which I love. Um, we do have some more classical art pieces too, historical items, um, but our focus mostly is the modern uh, upscale furniture that goes into um, some of the contemporary art. So, so uh, t you mentioned that there's something for everybody uh, mm -hmm. in, in these auctions. And so Trista, when you, when you say something for everyone, can you give us a range of what that is? Because we've heard and we, and we know from your business from talking with Terry previously and from what Deborah has already said, there's a lot of really higher end products that are there and, and pieces that are there, but f that's not going to necessarily fit into a lot of people's budgets. So what is that range generally when you have an auction uh, through the shop too and through these businesses? What is that range that people may be aware of if they're coming in of these different kinds of products that they can pick up? Well, yeah, that's a great question. So we have um, some examples here, like for example, behind me, this is a mid-century modern sculpture by Detroit artist James Nani, and it's really dynamic. Uh, you can move it and change it, and that piece is starting off at 350. Um, another piece, I just pulled a couple examples here. Um, this is one of the like urban uh, contemporary art pieces I was, I was speaking of. This is by a California artist named Tom Hobrick, and it's tattoo ink on paper. And this piece is starting at $150. So it's an original drawing by a really established California-based artist and definitely something that I think so everyone can attainable for. We're joined by Trista Maltby and Dever Slobin from Le Shop 2, located in Kego Harbor on the Oakland County Megacast. Uh, and and uh, so when people think of works of art in an auction house, they think of uh, the, these crazy high-priced pr items. We talked hmm. about some of that range. We talked about some of those items that have been picked up from estate sales that were surprisingly, uh, that were surprisingly um, high value. What are some yeah. of the higher value items that you've been able to come across over the time that you've been operating this business? Either you, uh, you Deborah, in general, or or you, Trista, at the auction house that have been kind of surprises that have come in that have said, "Wow, this is actually really, really valuable," and we're excited to get this to auction. Well, I think you should talk about our world record at the yes. auction. Yes, yes. Yeah. So recently, um, uh, a, a son and daughter called me. They lived in uh, Pennsylvania. Their mother still lived here, and their father had passed away. He happened to be um, an architect. He was actually the right-hand man for, um, for uh, Eli Saarinen, who actually um, was the architect of Cranbrook. So they had an amazing collection. Her mom was 94 years old, and they wanted to move her to, pretty close to them to Pennsylvania. They had to come in and do an appraisal of their pieces. They wanted to bring them to the store for consignment. So um, going to the house, and we see this lovely, lovely Ray and Charles Ames cabinet. Now, um, I've seen this cabinet many times. They actually, you can buy a brand new version of it, you know, online right now for about $5,000. And I'm looking, going, you know what? It looks a little bit older than what I think 
it could be. So we brought it to the store, found the other great, great pieces they have, and I did some research. And in doing so, we found out this is a lot older than we thought it was. And so, come to find, it's actually the first edition, which when it came out, you know, it, when they first made it the first year in the 19, early 1950s. So, originally we thought probably between, you know, nine and $12,000 it might sell for an auction. And so, that's what we put it on the catalog for. Anyways, we're getting a lot of buzz, a lot of people inquiring about it. Long story short, it ended up setting a world record. The last one to sell at auction went for about 24000 This actually sold for, with the buyer's premium, $60,000. Um, and the great thing is, two great things came out of that. One is, it was actually purchased for a museum in California. So the piece will be on public display, not hidden in someone's house, so everyone can enjoy this amazing piece of work, piece of art, we call it. Uh, but secondly, when the kids told their mother what the piece sold for, her reaction was priceless. She had tears of joy saying, your father, my husband would have been so proud. And that's what really, you know, listen, these high numbers are lovely, but to see people's reactions and give those kind of numbers for them really just gives us a great sense of joy. Absolutely. And that it went into a museum, like Deborah said, just those right. are the, the, the cherry on top of everything. For sure. Like that. for sure, for sure. So Trista, you have an auction coming up on Sunday this week, April 3rd, the Modern Design Meets Street Art Auction. You mentioned uh, right. that earlier on and, and what are some of the pieces that will be there uh, in, in that auction. How can people participate? Is it on site? Is it online? A mixture of both? Yeah, so you can go to our website, lestrop 2com that's T-O-O.com, <laughs> and uh, as you'll see the tab on the top that says auctions, and then you'll see uh, a link once again to click on our catalog. From there, you can register for our auction and preview our catalog. Like I said, there's just under 300 items to preview, and you can start pre-bidding as of now. So if you see something that you like, you just uh, place your bid, and then you can watch the auction live, which is on Sunday, once again, at noon. And it just goes through piece by piece by piece. Um, every piece is about, uh, or each lot, I should say, is about mm, 30 to one, one minute. So it, it'll run from noon to about five o'clock uh, estimated time. And um, if you pre-register for the, um, the auction, you like an item or a lot or you pre-bid on it, when that lot comes up, then you will be notified uh, through email or your phone. But another really important way to bid too is you can call us and myself, um, one of the auction advisors or Deborah or Terry or Rhonda, any of our team, um, just give us a call and we can help you with the bidding process and you can do a phone bid as well. So a phone bid is a really simple way to uh, participate in our auction. If you're not really computer savvy, mm -hmm. a phone bid is, is something that we help uh, hundreds of our clients with each auction. Yes. And so uh, Trista, if somebody would like to auction off some of their items in, in the future, uh, how can they go about getting uh, getting connected with Le Shop 2 in order to get their items auctioned off? It's so simple. All you have to do is send us some photos uh, to our email, which is leshopretail at gmail.com. Uh, we'll take a look, Deborah, myself, and Terry will uh, come up with an idea of what we think it would sell for at auction. And if you think that sounds great, then you'll just um, bring it here, or we can even have someone come and pick it up for you. So it's a really hands-free, hassle-free process. And then, um, like I said, we do quarterly auctions. So if you missed out on this auction, we've got another one coming up, probably I would say the uh, mid to end supper. If I may add to Tyler, excuse okay. me. Um, what's nice too is that often at times, um, if the piece is not, um, say it doesn't have really great auction results, some pieces, sell much better at retail. Mm -hmm. So what we'll do is we'll kind of advise you, you know, these are the auction results, these are the retail results, and we're here to kind of help you get the most value out of your valuable items. And so there's also uh, other options I mentioned before. We also come into your home and do a complete estate sale for you. Uh, we'll come in and stage your home beautifully. We'll price everything. And what kind of makes us different than all the other estate sale companies out there is that we have the store, which means this, when a, another company comes in to do an estate sale for you, there's a lot of them out there. They've got three days to sell everything, right? And so often those more valuable items uh, could be sold at a, a really low value on the last day. We have another option. We don't have to sell that piece on the third day. We can put those higher value items, put a nice reserve on them, 
consumer may come in and pay that price, or if they don't, those items will then come to our store on consignment. They're, they're shown beautifully in our showroom. Um, they're also photographed and put on our five online shopping platforms. The nice thing is, because we have all these different shopping platforms, we literally sell and ship all over the world. We, we just, uh, we're right now packaging up a painting going to Hong Kong. And so when you're on the web, as you know, you've got a whole international audience. So um, it makes our company a little bit more unique for our clients and the fact we can do that for them as well too. Uh, De Deborah Trista, before we let you go, anything else that would be important or interesting for our audience to know about the shop too today? I just think that you should come visit. Uh, we're like a little mini museum. <laughs> uh, incredible artworks and furniture. And Deborah, if you want to add anything? Uh, yes, let me see all your new faces. It's a tour of our store. There is something for everyone. As I mentioned, we opened up a store called Remix about five doors down, kind of our clearance center. So there's definitely something for everybody here. We love to meet new faces and have become part of the shop family. Well, we thank you both for being with us. Thank, Thank you, you so Tyler. much. Have a great day.